President Biden is gearing up to unveil his $2.25 trillion infrastructure plan later today. The sweeping plan will undo some of the tax breaks that corporations received during the Trump administration and pump money into transportation, renewable energy, manufacturing, as well as efforts to combat climate change. Joining me now to break it all down is Joe Minerick. He's chief public policy economist at the conference board. He was chief economist of the Office of Management and Budget for eight years of the Clinton administration. Also, Tim O'Brien, senior columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. A big thank you to both of you for joining us. Joe, I want to start with you. Your reaction when this plan was unveiled 5 a.m. this morning, what do you think? It's a big plan. The path that they're talking about for enactment is a little tricky because of the fact that apparently there are aspects of the plan that they're holding back and that they're talking about putting into an additional bill that's going to make the parliamentary situation kind of complicated. The money spread over eight years uh, gives you perhaps a, a different image of what's being planned. It seems to be a little bit less of a rush, a little bit more of a buildup to a longer term program, which probably makes sense because a lot of these ideas will have to be implemented uh, gradually over a period of time. It's big. It's got a lot of component parts. It's spread over a lot of different uh, areas of infrastructure that carry different issues. So it's going to be a lot for Capitol Hill to chew on, especially if there's another bill coming along and you've got these tax increases to pay for it, which are going to make it a lot harder for Capitol Hill to swallow. We saw some of the numbers there, $620 billion for transportation, $650 billion for initiatives tied to improving quality of life at home. This includes stuff like clean water and high-speed broadband, close to $600 billion for strengthening American manufacturing, uh, $400 billion to address improved care for the elderly and people with disabilities. Tim O'Brien, is it big enough? Uh, it's big enough for, for now, I think, Joe Biden is very aware of what he can and can't do on Capitol Hill. He signaled that last week um, during his press conference when he was asked about gun legislation. And he spoke very directly towards what is the art of the possible when it comes towards getting legislation through on the Hill. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that, you know, $620 billion of this $2.2 trillion price tag is targeted at classic infrastructure spending roads, bridges, transit, ports, air, airlines, railways, um, things that have long have needed spending for a long time. The spending is long overdue. There have been by there has been bipartisan interest in addressing this. Um, the Trump administration routinely hosted infrastructure re weeks that never actually materialized. Um, I think this is an effort now to make this real. And and we need it. And, and I think that it's um, a, a response to the reality of the world we live in now. You know, there was a, a, a report out today that, that China's GDP is on track now to surpass the U.S. as much sooner than people expected. And part of the reason for that is that the Chinese government has been a very deft and specific sponsor of robust and imaginal, imaginative infrastructure spending. And we have fallen behind in that regard. So this isn't just big government spending. This is also about economic competitiveness. It's about uh, empowering workers. It's going to be spread across the country. And I think the issue of taxation, um, corporate tax rates need to be rationalized. Right. This will do some of that. And the government, right? I mean, the market right now, the stock market is not reacting negatively to this pro prospect of higher tax rates on corporations. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it, we would be seeing some sort of reaction if investors were concerned about a corporate tax hike. Remember, during uh, before the Trump tax cuts, the corporate tax rate was 35%, and many corporations weren't even paying that. Joe, given what Tim said uh, about potential bipartisanship here, that there is bipartisan agreement about infrastructure, and specifically what he said about China, do you think that the Biden administration will sell the infrastructure plan that way, that it's about global competition, and, and do that in an attempt to actually get Republicans on board here? I'm sure that global competitiveness will be a big part of the sales pitch. 
The argument is going to be that it costs more to move goods around the country than it should. We are not uh, mobilizing our entire population uh, in through the use of the internet to the fullest of their their uh, abilities. Uh, a big part of the internet problem is in rural parts of the country where there simply is not the connection that is necessary to get uh, people to uh, be able to work fully and to uh, uh, participate in uh, remote education. So there is going to be an argument in that regard. There's also the safety argument with respect to water, uh, where we've had a lot of issues. Uh, there's safety with respect to transportation as well. So it'll be multifaceted. But the one thing that unites members of Congress right now is an antipathy towards China. And mm. to the extent that you can talk about global competitiveness and the strength of the U.S. economy with respect to China, uh, that is an attractive message these days. Tim, I want to ask you specifically about these uh, tax hikes that are, that are talked about this in this plan, that are part of this plan. How do you get Republicans on board with increased taxes? Uh, they may not. I, I, you know, the, the reality right now is, is that the Congress is so divided um, that uh, I don't anticipate there being a groundswell of Republican support for this, no matter how it's packaged. Um, but I think what really matters is is uh, the Biden administration holding firm, retaining its ambitions, and also educating the American public about what initiatives like this involve. Infrastructure spending isn't isn't just dumping water into a well that never comes back. We get enormous returns economically on shrewd infrastructure spending. In some cases, it pays for itself over time. Um, and there's a historical playbook for this, by the way. In 1956, Dwight Eisenhower, a Republican president, uh, forced through the Federal Highways Act. It, it was pitched as a way to protect the country in the case of a nuclear attack from Russia. You could evacuate cities faster. But the real incentive behind it was improving the national infrastructure, making roads and highways better, which was an enormous boon to interstate commerce and economic development across the country. And there was a lot of the debate at the time about it being a, you know, a, a big government boondoggle um, that tr turned out to be meritless. And, and I think that that's a lesson for people to pay attention to now. Uh, um, and, and, and the other thing I would point to is back in the 1950s, there were political divisions, but people were able to come together around communal uh, joint efforts in the national interest. And that, that is missing from the debate now. Hey, Joe, I want to end with you and, and just talk about this in the context of your eight years at OMB under uh, the Clinton presidency. How would you sell this to the American people? How would you sell this to Republicans? How would you sell this to people who get scared when they hear that taxes are going to go up? The most important thing, I think, is talking about the long-term economic return from these kinds of investments, which I believe uh, Tim uh, stated accurately. At the same time, it's going to be a balancing act talking about the additional money going out the door after all of the previous uh, response spending to COVID-19 and the resulting accumulation of the public debt. That would be the reason why you would need to have the offsets uh, to, uh, to pay for it. Raising business taxes is uh, attractive on one end of one side of the aisle, but it's going to be difficult to sell. And even if the president decides that he wants to do this through an additional reconciliation bill, he gets two shots a year, so he has one more coming. Uh, selling that to his entire Democratic caucus, because the Congress is so evenly divided, mm. is not going to be easy. So it would be great if we could have a bipartisan consensus that included reducing the hit on the budget, which is going to be a problem at some point in the future. But that's going to be a very difficult sell for the president. 
Guys, we have to leave it here. I would love to keep talking about it. Thank you so much for joining us. Joe Minner, Chief Public Policy Economist at the Conference Board. Also, Tim O'Brien, Bloomberg Econ Opinion Senior Columnist. Big thank you to you guys for your time. Appreciate it.